on a spring day from Lola, Montana, Don Roman Ranch. We've had a couple of miserable days here. It's been snowing in many parts of Montana, and we've gathered some new snow on the mountains around the ranch. And of course, everyone has been watching that the river's been rising. So it's been kind of a, a soggy uh, day uh, at Don Roman, or soggy four or five days at Don Roman. And uh, although we're glad for the moisture generally, it does cause a little bit of havoc with everybody. I also wanted to, this morning to point out my flower arrangement in the back of me. It's not really flowers at all, is it? Those are fur flowers and they're feathers. And I wanted to point out one feather in particular that I am just so delighted to have. Sometime uh, about a week or so, it, it caught on the nest and then the wind blew it off onto the ground and uh, Celia was able to uh, follow it to the ground and show everybody the feather on the ground. Well, I saw that and of course I went out to grab the feather and I can't tell you how much this means to me. I am so delighted to have a feather from Harriet, to know that this was on Harriet. For one thing, you know, it's a possibility we could do some genetics on some of the uh, blood samples that have already been taken, um, you know, uh, that kind of thing. So there's some DNA involved in this, but just having something from Harriet just pleases me no end. So I wanted to give a shout out to Celia for having pointed that uh, feather um, incident out to everybody, which enabled me to go out there and get it. So thank you, Celia. I really, really appreciate it. And I believe this video... Um, deals with uh, some of the problems that arise during the calving season, and that is when you have a, a calf without a mother. I think he is grafting a calf onto a cow so that to save the calf's flies. So uh, with that, James, would you please roll the film? Well, hello from the hash knife. Yeah, we got a situation here. I got a set of twins about a week ago, and the uh, cow's keeping them paired up, making sure that little one, little uh, heifer, is able to get plenty to eat. Excuse me, I keep looking over the camera here because I got a cow that just lost her calf last night. And so I'm trying to convince them both that this is in their best interest. So, see here is I've got a cow. He's not too wild about taking the calf. Calf's pretty stressed, but there we go. This calf has now decided that this is a pretty good dinner bucket. It's pretty captive, because I got this cow in the head catch. Uh, what we use for, generally for pulling calves, assisting in a birth, uh, when something's backwards or too big, you know, those kinds of things. So the cow can't do it on her own. The cow really wants a calf badly, but she just doesn't want this calf. So I've done a couple of things. Uh, there's some products on the market that you can use. Oh, there we go. She was, I was just been by hand squirting milk in her mouth and she was not really taken to this. But there, anyway, there's some products that you can get to make a smell on the cow's nose and then match that to the calf, you spray the calf down, or there's all kinds of different things. We used to, in the way old days, uh, we'd skin the dead calf and then put the, that hide on the back of this young calf or the calf you want to graft. And so I noticed this morning that this little girl, she was running around trying to find anybody who would allow her to steal a little bit of lunch and nobody was having much of it. So she's getting feed where she can. She's milking as she can. But this is a good opportunity to try to graft this calf onto this cow because this cow's a perfectly good cow. Uh, just something wrong with this calf. We did some work on her last night trying to keep her alive and and uh, it just didn't, didn't materialize. So this is a really good sign. If this calf and cow can take each other, then that's a win. It takes uh, a set of twins off of one cow that is going to be super taxed. She had a set of twins last year, and, and it taxed her pretty heavily, and now she's got another set this year. So if I can graft her onto this cow, that helps everybody. 
Well, what I was trying to say with the smell stuff is I've, I'm trying something a little different. Uh, that, a lot of that stuff doesn't work all that great. Uh, the calf hide kind of works. You do what you can. But I was talking to an old friend of mine, geez, a number of years ago, and all of his cows really come to uh, to grain or to uh, pellets, just as our cows do. So what I've done is I crushed up a bunch of pellets, and I just crumbled them up, and I spread them all along her back, her head, neck, nose, and uh, then I fed the cow. And the cow is getting a little bit better about uh, coming close to her, letting the calf come up to her, but she kicks her away a little bit, but not horribly. So here we are. She wouldn't take her, but she's warming up to her, and this calf is getting a little stressed and needed something to eat. So I brought the cow in and got her head caught. And she's not kicked this calf off at all. So this is maybe the start of something beautiful here. And I may have to take the calf and... Uh, pull it away from the cow again, bring the cow back into his head catch, you know, because they'll get to fighting you and step on the calf. They don't care about them. So I may have to do this again uh, a number of times, but I'm going to keep this cow and calf up close, and we will, oh, man, that's good when that tail wags. That's a good sign. She might have hit the chocolate spigot there. Only a tail goes like that for sweets and chocolates. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, we'll keep it posted. We'll see how this goes. And uh, hopefully we got us a success story here later on. Well, here's round two. I've left him in the corral for the afternoon. And this little heifer's been trying real hard to grab some lunch. And this cow kicks her off, so she's going to get more of this making her stand still treatment. And uh, this calf is being pretty darn persistent, so that's a good thing. But uh, she needs to let her nurse, without kicking her off, this calf come running right in here. We should have had a picture of it, but I don't. But she'll settle down here in a minute. That's got to feel good relieving some pressure off that bag, too. But hopefully we'll keep doing this. And this calf is spry enough and it's fast enough that it can get out of her way when she moves around. The only thing I'm worried about is we're stepping on her, but she'll get a belly full of food. She knows where that's coming from, and all of a sudden, I'm becoming her best friend because we're tag-teaming this bucket of milk. All right, stay tuned. Here we got the baby in again. It's early morning, and this cow, I'm trying her without the head catch, and this is what happens. She keeps kicking this baby off, so... We'll see if we can stick her back in the head catch and persuade her a little bit more. She's got to be able to take this baby and let her eat as she wishes. Yeah, we're getting a little bit better. She's getting slightly more cooperative. You can see that little one is undeterred. She's figured out that her and I are tag teaming this cow, and if this cow will just come around and say, you know what, this is the only thing that I'm able to nurse. Then maybe she'll accept this calf a little bit better. This is, she's not kicking her off. Or she's moving away. Yeah, there's a kick, but I think the calf banged her a little bit too. These calves get a little rough with these cows. They'll hit that bag with their head to let more milk down. They're pretty smart. It's like they do that I've seen them do that within minutes of the first time they've nursed. Just an instinct that they figure out how the heck that more milk gets if I hit it with my head. I guess it's all they got. They got no thumbs. Thank God, or I'd be in trouble. All right. Maybe we'll let her finish out. Hopefully this goes nice and smooth. Only 700 more of these. Maybe she'll take this calf. This is what makes for long non-productive days. She's trying to avoid her. Come on, little one. Yeah, that girl. You just get right back in there. This calf is smart, too. This helps. She's smart. She's pretty persistent. 
and she's able to reach all four nipples from one side. That can't feel good, but that's what they do. All right, well, we'll keep going on this little later. Ooh, she smelled her hind end. That's always a halfway positive sign. When they start licking them, licking their tail or rend, that will spur that calf, especially newborns, to suck. And a lot of times if you got one that won't suck and you can massage them around the rectum, and just kind of just rub them, they will uh, have an instinct to suck, so that helps. Yeah, maybe she'll, maybe she'll start accepting her. Let's hope so. Hey. Get back in there, little one. That's right. Look her over, stare her down. Tell her who's boss. Had a girl. Hey, cow, let her in there. Make me intervene again here. You let that baby suck. Had a kid try from this side. Hey. You let her suck. Yeah, if I distract her a little bit here, that helps that little kid can get in there. Hey. All right, you're about to go on the head stay, catch. All right, kiddo, do your thing. Yeah, that girl. Yeah, get up there. She might try to kick, but you got to be insistent. Your belly's pretty full. It looks out, but... Latch on, there you go. She's a little wary. She got kicked in the head a few times by this cow. I don't blame her. Getting cow kicked doesn't feel good. There we go. Yeah, it's a bit better access. You got two alternatives. You can either let this calf do this in the open, or we can take it from you. Till you decide to let us take it from the open. I don't like this being tight and confined like this because this calf can sure get hurt. So that's why I have to be here the whole time. I give that cow a little grain. That bucket's there in front. I give her a little cow cake to eat it as an incentive to come in there and also as a little bit of a reward. Yeah, hey. Want some more cake? Hmm? Your head in there. There we go. Hear her that. She gets that. Everybody's happy until we run out of that. But this gets her to slow down a little bit, just drag her a little and give her a chance to fill up. We keep doing this, eventually she's going to give in, I hope. This is one of those things that you hope you've done the right thing. It sure is the right thing to take this twin away when she's competing for food and not getting food. you got to get it from somewhere, but then it's a matter of did this cow is she really the one for the right choice not that i've got many alternatives but i want them to really pair up so she's going to take care of this calf all right yep, don't fight you're fine don't get mad there you go little one get back in there she's smart she gets out of the way 
the cow starts moving and then she comes right back to it that you can't ask for a better calf there's nothing worse than one that won't suck when they got an opportunity and this is about as good as it gets on this calf's end all right i'm not having to milk this cow out that really helps Well, we're making a little bit of headway. The calf is able to get in there and grab some lunch. And the cow's letting her do it. I've had to put her in the head catch now, oh, three, four times now, I think, three times. And now uh, with limited success without it. So I let her fill up earlier a couple times today. And then uh, she's been turned out. I just threw some hay out for this cow. And you know, she kicked this calf off once, but now she's allowing her to get right in there. So we might be making a little bit of headway. Let's hope so. Let's hope she takes this calf in short order and keep them together and decides that, you know what? Adoption is a good thing. Of course, we've got a peanut gallery of horses here that I'm training that needs to be in on the mix. Asking all kinds of questions. Hey, where can I get one of those? Yeah, you don't need one of those. If I send you home with a colt in you, I think your owner would be a little unhappy. <laughs> yeah, we've got another successful nursing on this calf, but we've had to do it this way again. So. She uh, didn't want to take this calf out there and uh, so as you can see, a little hard to see, I have had to skin her dead calf and it's kind of a gruesome way to do it but it's worked in the past kind of old school type to let her out, smell her calf, ooh, ooh, she says, hey, wait, 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 that's my baby. How come? How come my baby all of a sudden showed up? And we tie this to this calf and we'll leave her in here with her. And uh, see that just got that old hide draped over her. And hopefully she'll say, you know what, this isn't such a bad thing. And start to accept this calf. We'll try that kind of getting down here to desperation. I don't like that she hasn't taken it or won't take it as easily. She did and she was kind of mixed and lukewarm about it. Sorry for the photography here, but, or videography. But anyway, we're trying to get her to take this, this calf that clearly not her own and she's thinking it's not her own, but it sure smells like it should be her own. That's the whole point if she'll now take this calf and uh, let her nurse think it's hers. Give her very advantage we can. We haven't had to do this in a long, long, long time, but we'll see what we can do. Here we go. She's smelling this baby. That flaming, she's almost like a bull does. Looking for hormone receptors. She's sniffing on this baby. She knows that's the right smell. I should have done this to begin with. But drafted, but it didn't work as well as I wanted, so here we go. I'm going to leave them here close together. The calf is, she sucked her out quite a bit. <clears throat> but I wanted her to realize that she'd been drained. And she knows that. Hi, sweetheart. Deliberate about what we're doing here. Trying to be advantageous to her natural inclination to take her own calf. So, and this can be and, uh, happy. But she'll bed down for a little bit, 
and go to sleep. And when she gets up, hopefully this cow is, she's paying more attention to her now, nose-wise, smelling her, trying to figure out why all of a sudden she got this good smell that she hasn't had in the past, but I don't think they really reason that well. But we'll give her a little time to think about this and realize that, you know what, that's, that's what my baby smelled like. And this must be my baby. That's the long and the short of it right there. So we'll see how this goes. Yeah, we might be getting some headway made here. I'm not seeing her allowing this baby to nurse out in the corral. But I did bring her in just now under some duress. She did, <laughs> doesn't want to come in. And most of it's I think she doesn't want to get uh, put in that head catch. And I don't blame her, but still, she needs to let this baby eat. So the calf is a little bit wary of her, of course, to do this. Oh yeah, come on, smell that baby. Start to accept her. I think she's starting to accept her. This has been a rough road and she is not happy with me. Doesn't like me anymore and I frankly don't care. My concern is about this calf. You see it? Yeah, see she's giving a little warning there. But if we can continue to do this, I'm going to let this calf suck for a little bit. And if she starts to kick her off, then I'm going to give her a little bit of cow cake. But so far, so good. Man, this is the best encouragement I've seen so far. And uh, the baby is not as shy this morning as she was. You see how she, when she moves, she kind of separated. And <laughs> that cow is just not happy. <laughs> And this is, this is not an ideal cow for this. A lot of cows will just take these calves. A lot of them are even worse. So um, it is what it is. You deal with it. Try to innovate. And uh, I had that other calf, her, her own calf's hide on her when I skinned it yesterday and put it on this calf, tied it to her for the, and uh, really make her accept her. But this is, this is some good stuff. Well, I'm out first thing in the morning. The light's just coming up. And look what we have. We've got number 97 taking on that little heifer twin, and letting her nurse. So this is very successful. And really a relief off my mind that I've done the right thing here. So we're gonna keep them around here for a couple more days. And I just wanna make sure that this is gonna stick and stay. This. Uh, cow has been much more attentive. She's been talking to this calf and uh, the calf is almost like she's not bonded to the cow uh, like she should be, which is no big surprise. It's, I think this calf has been an opportunist for, oh, three, four or five days before uh, we lost this calf on this cow. And she was just going from cow to cow, eating what she could when she could. So there's really been no maternal bond there for the calf. And uh, hopefully give them a few more days, that'll change. All right, good success story. Here's a little bit more success. If, uh, turned out this number 97 cow and that 88 twin heifer in with some of these heifers that are about to calve. And as you can see, that little girl and this cow have started to bond. I cow just called her over and up out of a nap and she ran over and tried to nurse off of this cow right in front of us here and the cow talked to her again and she left that one and that heifer and then come right over to her and started nursing so we've got a real strong bond starting to develop this is really good I'll give it a couple more days and turn them out so I'm liking what I'm seeing so I just turned these two out. <laughs> the calf got caught behind the fence here on the way out. So I let a distress call. A little, little bit of a Mah! And she come back running. Her says cows. Just got her calf here. She's just stupid. She's a young heifer. And uh Mah! that made her come on a run. So you know she wants this calf. Now this calf has just got to go with her. 
Fences are hard. Things are difficult when you're little. You'd think you'd stick pretty close to that dinner bucket, little one. Let's go. You got a full belly, that's why. You don't care. There we go. Yep. Listen to him talk. Listen to her. There we go. That's much better. Cow's just got to keep her with her. And she's got one of those little uh, independent minds, you might say. Horse is going to check it out. <laughs> See what's going on. There we go. Okay. Now we're unobstructed. Brandon, you had us all sitting on the edge of our seats. <laughs> and I think you brought out the maternal instincts in every one of us. We really wanted to see a success there. And it, you know, it, the other thing that really impressed me, Brandon, is the affection in your voice. You really care about these animals. And I think that's something that uh, people can forget, just how much affection ranchers have for their animals that I mean it, it, you it, you you exuded care in the way you talked about them well I mean you don't realize you're doing that but you do I mean you know you do care and and uh, uh, yeah I, I never thought of it quite like that that it would that it would show because it's not supposed to I'm <laughs> you know I guess supposed to have a street cred that you just leave me alone because I'm too tough for you so <laughs> yeah, well, you've exposed yourself, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you have. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it's, and I think it's something that people uh, forget, you know. I mean, the point of, of raising the cattle, of course, is meat production. But that doesn't mean that a lot of genuine affection and care and, and love goes into that whole process. And I think, you know, the whole um, life-death cycle to people who are involved in agriculture is a very different sort of a thing than to those of us or, um, who live in rural and urban areas and are kind of um, disassociated from that. I, you know, I think there's a lot of truth to that. Um, you know, people don't realize a lot of times what, we'll, what we will do, what ends we will go to, to... Uh, save an animal or to you know like this one make a pair and and really if worse come to worse i could take this calf and feed it via a bottle a couple of times a day in which you know we do have that situation but uh now but that would make another one and it, there's sometimes it's a matter of convenience but when you when you take on a calf in that manner where you are its sole sustenance they don't do as well uh, mm -hmm. They they just don't thrive quite as well. They're they it stunts their growth a little bit. I mean, they just don't develop naturally like they should. Uh, and as far as the you know the type of care or the the ends that you'll go to, I, I can uh, recall here just a couple of years ago, my uh, son Braden was home during spring break from college and kind of gave me a break. He was uh, in there and he had a cow that needed a calf pulled. He pulled the calf. And the calf, I think, probably was stillborn. He didn't realize it, didn't think about it. And I don't know whether he's afraid for a butt whooping for me, you know, or, you know, and, and really more of it was he's doing everything he could to, to save the calf. But he, he cleaned that calf's airway out and literally gave it CPR for 15 to 20 minutes, trying to everything he could desperately to get this, this calf to breathe. And it and just it didn't happen. And he was... He was devastated. You know, and here's a kid that's, you know, 22, 23 years old. And it, he was just, he was heartbroken that he couldn't save this calf. And I was like, you know what? You can't ask for doing any more than that. I know a lot of people that wouldn't even do that. Uh, yeah. and, and so, yeah, we'll do what, what we can. We'll do everything, everything we can uh, to, to keep that animal alive. It's, it, it, we owe it to him because we're, you know, we're trying to help create that little booger. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, it is. They're, they're for meat, produ to, uh, meat production, and they're uh, also the means of which we can uh, keep a legacy going and keep a, a ranch halfway afloat and, and try to make a living. 
Yeah, yeah. It it, it this uh, requires so much of ranching families. I mean, there's that emotional investment, and I know you have. Uh, you also have to be practical. I mean, it it requires a lot, not just physically of ranching families, but you know, kind of emotionally and mentally, like your son going out there. Oh, th there's trauma involved in losing animals and, and getting them through storms and through difficult times. I mean, it's just, it's not your, your nine to seven uh, or job, nine to five job, it's just not at all, you know. And I think people don't always understand the huge emotional investment that there is. So one of the things we were talking about uh, in the uh, chat, uh, Brandon, was that this happens with horses as well, that uh, a, a foal will be born and, and the mare dies during uh, birth, or a, uh, a dead foal is born, a stillborn foal, and, and a an, nurse an mate is looking for a foal. Has that ever happened on, on your ranch? Yeah, we've had uh, that happen. It's very, very rare. And the reason I think it's so rare is that, pardon me, is that uh, we really have a lot less foals born than you have cows born, right? So it's a numbers game as well. And I mean, that's not just with us. That's, that's everybody. Um, I'm trying to fix my screen here. Somehow I put myself on, the, on this, and it's, that is not what I want to look at. But uh, anyway... Uh, we we have had it happen. When it does, horses are very, very touchy. It's very difficult to keep a foal alive if it's lost its mother. Uh, and if you're lucky enough to have a uh, – it's not lucky. I mean, it's just fortunate that you have a situation where you've got a nursemaid mare and a foal that's in need. And you can get them close to, together quickly um, and, and pair them up. That's a really good thing. I mean, that that happens. It's – it's very, very tough to keep a foal alive without a mare at all. Uh, that, that's, the odds are very low that that, that uh, foal will survive. So um, cattle are a lot more resilient that way, but, uh, and I think we, we don't have the practice with it, if you might say, with a, with a foal uh, compared to a calf. So it's happened. We've, we've been able to uh, save a foal. We've, we've lost foals. Uh, so um, I hate it when that happens because that, you know, there's still something about a horse emotionally that touches us much more easily and I think more deeply, even if you don't know the horse. Uh, you know, calves are cute and everything, but they grow up to be ugly cows, too. So, <laughs> and we like to eat them. But, uh, you know, when, when that happens with a horse, there's just that symbolism, I think, of uh, our relationship as a society and cultures all around the world what, that we have with a horse versus uh, a little bit more distant with, uh, with a cow. But it's 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 hard. It's very difficult, and boy, I don't envy anybody that has that happen to them. Uh, that is that is not fun. Yeah. Well, we were just remarking that uh, the internet has really helped that in a lot of ways because there are Facebook pages where people keep their eye on it. If they if the mayor loses a foal, they'll advertise. I have a, a nurse made mayor ready to take a foal, so people are are speedily uh, making those kinds of uh, interactions. So happen and yeah. I, remember, I remember talking to my vet the first time i had a fall and you know you know dr richardson he's always oh, yeah. so straightforward he says suzanne uh, uh horses have been bred to breed easily and to birth easily he said 99.9 uh, percent .9 of the time it's a is an uneventful e event he said but when it is an event it's a it's a horrific event it's there, catastrophic no yeah. In between. yeah there's no in between yeah, you know, that's the, that's right. Yeah, yeah. so uh, it, but the it seems like mares do fairly well in in birthing. That that the vast majority of them are without incident. Yeah, and even even the ones that um, are without incident that we are with them, we tend to complicate things. Yeah, we will overcomplicate things, and, and we need to just leave them the hell alone. They yeah. will do just fine, and and we think we need to get in there and help them and. and Ninety nine point nine right percent of the time you don't leave them alone. It's yeah. not not saying you you shouldn't keep an eye on them or can't keep an eye on them, but don't intervene when you think you need to. Give them more time. Those those girls know what they're doing. Yeah, well, that's exactly what Richardson said as well. He says, "Stay the heck out of there, Suzanne." Yep. 
yep. wash from a distance. <laughs> yeah, you're all you're all a bunch of nursemaids and want to oh, be midwives. <laughs> uh, oh, I've done this once. I've got this. Just leave. Let me help you here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, Brandon, this was a really heartwarming story, and I really appreciate you sharing this with us. I mean, again, it shows one of those intricate details of ranch life that few people get to see. Well, and I'll, I got to tell you, yeah, that had a that's got a good ending. That calf, I saw her on Friday or Saturday, and she is a little beast. I mean, she's <laughs> getting some muscle, and she is sassy and spunky, and uh, I've I've ridden past her a few times and made sure that they were still paired up, and and that cow is taking care of her, and, and they are, and that, so that's good. The thing that haunts me about that is that I couldn't save that other calf. Yeah. You know, and that, so there's there's still that side of that story that you guys didn't see. And, and honestly, right. I was working so fast and trying to do something. That I, did, I didn't get any film on that. And, and could have, because I, I really, I, I, I tubed or put a, a, a esophageal tube down its throat. I tried to uh, save it. And I think, I think the problem was, is that cow is so protective of the of her calf? I think she stepped on her, probably defending her from a coyote, uh, because she had a distended belly, and I and I I drained, put a tube in her, and and, and drained a bunch of really nasty dark greenish stuff, and it's like that's not normal for a calf. And then I I did a bunch of uh, intervention with uh, some drugs uh, or some antibiotics, and I tried. Uh, you know, some enemas and also uh, drenching with oil and did everything right. Everything was, was good. I even, I consulted the vet and that's one of those deals where, you know, I called my vet and I don't call her unless I really need to. And I, I said, you know, Catherine, what do I do here? This is what I've got. This is what I've done. This is the symptoms. She goes, you know, she said, we could do some surgery on the calf, but it's going to be more than the cost of the calf if it lives. I mean, that's, and that's exactly what it comes down to. And I said, "All right, I'll do what I can." And it did. It died through the night. I just couldn't save it. So, but that that still bothers me that I couldn't save a calf. Of course, it's wrenching. Yeah. It's wrenching. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, your whole physical body is involved in it. This is not just a, a casual thing. I mean, you just get completely committed. You so. do. That's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, Brandon, it's just such a joy to share your life with us. I really appreciate it and. We just learned so much, and I do know that um, that Ashley is out there waiting with Augie, so I will invite her in, and I will say goodbye to you for this session, and thanks again. And, and I want to let everybody know that Brandon will be coming to Dunrovin at the end of June. We'll have him here for a couple of days, and I'm hopeful that his son, Kalen, will be able to come with him. Yeah, he's trying to get some leave right now, and uh, hopefully... He can attend a wedding of a very, very close friend and then uh, come on out with me and and uh, you guys can get a chance to see him and visit with him a little bit and yeah. um, see how he how he interacts with everybody. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. Thank you. You okay, bet. We'll see you later. Thanks a lot, Brandon. Are you there, Ashley? I sure am. Good morning. Hey, Ashley. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Brandon? Very good. You have the Augie Meister. I have the Augmeister, a uh, soggy, oggy, doggy. <laughs> Although today's not soggy. <laughs> but his summer coat's coming in really nice. He looks beautiful. So handsome. Yeah, he is getting kind of slicked off a little, isn't he? Yeah. His legs are still pretty white and fuzzy, but the rest of him's getting back to being Palomino orange. <laughs> but it's been funny the last few weeks, just this like weird spotted creature out in the field. <laughs> like, right, who is that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Coming off in patches, yeah. He's, yeah. he's really getting some, really getting some yellow into that, into that uh, hair coat. Yep. So, well, so today um, we're gonna make an adjustment to our stone boat training. Yep. Um, after the last few weeks of not working with Augie, and I, you know, took vacation, we didn't meet one week and one, another. Um, I realized my shoulder is feeling a lot better than it was and it has been. So. Um, we're going to adjust the training um, and figure out something else to do with the stone boat in the meantime. Um, but I figured today we could uh, practice driving here in the arena. I did work with him on it a few weeks ago instead of the stone boat, just, you know, driving in here. Um, but I do have the gate open to the pasture and I would love to see what he does when he's got all the open space and see um, how we can work on control with that. There you go. Yeah. 
Yeah, control. Okay. I mean, you still got to have the control no matter where you're at, right? So mm-hmm. that's a that's a really good thing to work on. It's you're just kind of uh, up in the ante a little bit, and instead of being contained, taking him where he needs to go, where where you need him to go, and that's not necessarily as controlled. So that's that's all about all about being able to control. Yeah, and I figured you know we're in such an enclosed environment in here, and he's used to being in the arena, but. We haven't worked out there yet, so right. I'd like to see what he thinks about it, and um, it'll get him used to going out there without the stone boat first, yep. and then we can kind of figure it out from there. So let me get yep. his lines lines down. And this is this is kind of interesting because this is when you're driving him. Um, for those that are, are are watching, this is not like you're thinning on him, and that you can just turn him into a tight circle to contain them to keep him from running running away. You're behind him. And so mm-hmm. this is where that woe is so important. You need them to be able to respond to a stop so that you can just stop everything and just stand in place. And uh, that's, that's really your biggest basic control outside oh. of doing a circle, but it's a longer, wider circle because, again, you're still standing behind them. Oh. You remember the ropes. <laughs> All of a sudden, they're going to eat him? Yeah. So I guess we need to desensitize with some ropes between your legs, huh? That was the other thing I was going to ask you too. Um, just like continuing desensitization with him. Um, if you have more ideas of stuff that I could work with him on, because I know we did the tarps before, I could do that again. Um, or just like wrapping the rope around his legs or something like that. Yeah, uh, the ropes around legs are really, really big deal with your groundwork and if you can take uh, you know even a lead rope or a, a big heavy rope something that's large mm-hmm. doesn't have to be small and then you just snake it around you kind of kind of as you like you did with sack where you would wrap it throw it and kind of wrap it around their legs do the same thing with the rope and then just put it between around mm-hmm. through and just keep dragging uh you know like a serpentine around their legs so that they are uh, comfortable with not only just touching it, but the movement of it and the pressure yeah. of it as well. So er, all those some different sensations are, are really important really work to make that horse less likely to walk off or move off or, or be concerned about it at the very least. Yeah, I did that in the round pen with him. Um, I don't know if it was the last time I worked with him, but it was definitely a couple of weeks ago. Um, who, where are you going? I... Um, I had just taken the whip that I was using and I was kind of just like moving it all around, touching his body with it. And then I took his lead rope, did the same thing, kind of like just waved it in the air um, just so you could see it moving and then just kind of like snaking it around his legs. And he seemed to do fine there, but just yep. some consistency would be good with it. Yep. And, but, and even so, a tarp is really, really big oh. and it's important to do that. We want to do that, but the, the rope is different. It's not the tarp because mm-hmm. so, the tarp is very overt. In, in in the nature of him being able to see it and you get used to it and they're like, okay, well, that rope is something a little oh. bit different because they know they can be contained with that rope, you know, and if you've got a horse that's been uh, maybe burned a little bit with a, a, a rope on a, on a hawk, then, hey, you know, I don't need that around my feet and because I know it's going to hurt. So, they, you know, yeah. you, may, you may have to overcome something like that that's happened, um, you know, in the, in the recent past or even distant past. I mean, they, they do have a memory. Definitely. All right. So he's getting a little antsy. Forward. Ha. Good boy. I like you've got your reins up through a, or your lines up through a, uh, a spreader up on his hip. That's that's realistic. That's good. Yeah. I, um. Gosh, that was one of those first sessions when we were trying to drive him. Um, those are the rings that I had put on there. And I noticed that the um, the back pad was a little loose because it would uh, swing side to side. So I just tightened it up today. Okay, and it good. looks like it's a lot better. Good. G. G. Good boy. G. Good boy. Whoa. Good boy. Whoa. There we go. Whoa. Very good. Good boy. Forward. He's trying to, he's wanting to turn and face you like, oh, 
love on me, pet me, and let me go. Right. <laughs> and he is getting more sensitive to the kiss forward because now I can do it and you can kind of see his muscles clench and he's like, oh, I gotta go. Good. Uh, good boy. Forward. I like how he's he's turning and doing kind of a half pass. He's not just spinning around. Watch watch those front legs. They are moving off to the side a little bit. And I mean he's kind of got that that good um G. G. side movement instead of just G. wheeling himself around in a in a circle. G. Good boy. Whoa. You're not going good. anywhere. Very good. Oh, very good. Yeah, I'm trying to get him to stop, stand, stop. Yeah, and you're pulling his hind end around. That's good, so that you know when something's in front of him, he's not trying to do the same thing. Oh, so he just stops and just stands. Oh, there you go. That's better. There, that's better. Now Whoa. you pull the other way. And he's not going to do that very far. Very long when he's, no. when he's hooked up to something. <laughs> yeah, he tries it a little bit with the stone boat, then he realizes he's stuck in there, and then he just stops. Right. Yeah, you can tell he's, I can tell by his attitude a little bit, just his eye, his ears, the way he's carrying himself. He's had a couple of uh, days off. Oh, yeah, he's a little spicy and feisty today. Yep. And uh, Mama's across the street calling out to him every five minutes, so that doesn't help either. <laughs> uh, those are training opportunities. Those are just obstacles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> G. Good. G. He's responding to that. He's responding to your voice. He's throwing that head a little bit because he doesn't think he needs to, but he needs... He needs to knock that off. Yeah. He's just being a little bit of a, uh, a little puss sour puss head. Yes. Uh, Doesn't like being uh, told what to do. No. You can poop and walk. Keep going. Come on. I poop in your general direction. <laughs> G. Good boy. G. Oh, yeah. Definitely responding to the voice. That's so cool to see that. Yep. yep. Whoa. Good boy. Whoa. That's better. Good boy. That's better. Whoa. Good job. There we go. Now let's go see if we can get the gate. Forward. Ha. Good. So you did nothing but voice command there, and he and he went forward just like you asked. That's great. G. He's tuning in to you. That's fantastic. G. G. Good boy. Yeah, you know. Forward. Oh, I don't want to stand in the puddle. I'm a little puddle princess. Oh. <laughs> they are. Little twinkle toes. Forward. Forward. Good boy. G. Good. G. Good boy. All right, so we're going to head out of the arena here through the barnyard and then through our other dirt corral. All right. And I'm going to stop him before we get to the pasture so he doesn't think he just gets to take off. Yeah, I would I would spin him around right around all this stuff a little bit. He is so familiar with it. I just don't see an issue that's going to come up. So uh, good boy. Yeah, and while you guys were still doing the video and everything, I just walked him in hand around everywhere so he wasn't just standing still. Yeah. So, we got to go look at everything. But it's all different. All different. I've got a saddle on. It's all different. All right. Somebody's following me. This is this is scary stuff. Whoa. Good boy. Whoa. Very good. 
Good boy. There, there you go. Good correction. Good boy. Oh, big yawn. Yeah, there you go. Whoa. I didn't say go anywhere. Good. Good, Good boy. Correction. Good job. Good oh, job, right. Ashley. You're making you. him do what you want, and is, and you're correcting him very, very soon. He's only getting a step maybe with each foot, and then that's it, and then you're bringing him back. That's perfect. It, it's, that's, that's much more important than letting him go forward and then stopping without backing him up to correct him. That, that yeah. is the key to him knowing where he is, where he's been, and then, oh, where I ended up again. And that, that's a, mentally, that is a big deal when you're training. Uh, see what you do a circle in here. Uh, yeah, I see his front legs crossing over. Yes. Might be hard to see behind this uh, shed. Nope, I can Boy, see behind forward. just over the top. Forward. Very good. The hinds, the hinds are expectedly he's not going to do that because he's got nothing to pressure him over. That's that's okay. Yeah. yeah, see he's turning his body instead of just turning himself into a you know, doubling back on him on himself. There look at uh, that. Oh yeah. Uh, whoa. You're gonna run into that gate. You better stop. Whoa. Oh. Okay, so when he does that, it's kind of the same thing as going forward when you don't want to. Go, don't be afraid to pop him on the butt, make him stop okay. and go oh. forward, and then and then just keep pushing him back and oh. forth. There you go. Because when he gets corrected oh. for movement, eventually he's going to stop moving. Oh. This is this is a very good. Yeah, oh yeah. Now he's going to grab some attitude. Good. Oh. He, wants to, he wants to do what he wants to do. So there. Good boy. Good job. Good boy. Yeah. Give him a second. He might start chewing a little bit. I noticed yeah. that lower yeah. lip and a little bit tight. Oh. Definitely moving it. Yep. Good. Blink, blink. Okay, he's got his ears back at me. He's looking at me. Yeah. Like, what, lady? What? I'd like to see him drop his head just a little bit. That's all right. He's at least he's complying. We'll try to circle around this barrel. G. Good boy. G. Good. G. Good. Whoa. Good boy. Whoa. Whoa. Good. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, keep hey. turning him. Yeah, if you can keep turning him around about another 90 degrees where you were. Because he might be just trying to, he will, oh. he will sit sometime face the gate like, hey, I don't want to be here anymore. Right. And so if I can face that way, maybe she'll figure out that this is what I want to do. Gee. She's not she's not too quick on the uptake here about what I want. She keeps trying to make me do what she wants. That's the name of the game. That's what exactly. we're doing. Exactly. G. G. Good boy. Forward. Good boy. G. Ah. Ah. Forward. Oh, really? Oh. Okay, let your rein go, let your line go, because you're you're telling him whoa, but backing him up. Okay. So give him some slack. Give him some slack and now tell him whoa. Whoa. There. Yeah, yeah, he's he's causing that whole thing, but you kinda gotta go with it a little bit and give him as much slack as you can because then he's getting cross communication. He's backing up. Yeah. He's backing himself up. He's putting the he's putting the pressure on, but he, he doesn't know that he's doing that. Whoa. Yeah, I wonder if the uh, the lines don't slide through these rings. Super smoothly, and if it like keeps the pressure on his mouth, it might a little bit. Um, try to when you turn him, try to just just lightly, lightly bump. Don't don't put a lot of pressure in his mouth, but just kind of, you know, just kind of flick your fingers on the on the line so that he feels it, and then and and then let it go. 
and oh. see how he responds if he's a little less mouthy than that because okay. he's shaking his head a little bit. Does that make sense oh. to you what I'm trying to say? It does. Just like the li give him lighter pressure at first to respond to it, and then if I need to increase it, increase it. Yep, yep, and okay. just just barely bump his mouth and see how he how he responds to that. And of course, with the voice commands as well. Yeah. Oh, good boy. Forward. Good boy. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Good boy. Good. Yeah, he's trying to he's trying to go towards that gate anyway, but that's all right. You're 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 oh. doing right, and you're and you look like you're pretty light on your correction there, so that's good. Yeah, that was just a little. I like squeeze my fingers together yep. to get yep. that. Yep. Forward. Good boy. Good boy. G. Hey, sees the open gate over here. He's like, "What's that?" We're not there yet. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Good. Ha. Huh. Good boy. Whoa. Good boy. Good That's boy. Better. That's good better. He's boy. not trying to turn. Good. 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 Yeah. Should I wait and see if he lowers his head? Yeah, I'd give him a, just give him a second because you had some okay. really good success here on some turns mm -hmm. and stop, and he's not trying to fight you quite as much as he was after that first, you know, initial takeoff, where he wanted to go to the gate. But I think you're doing much, much better. Yeah, look at him; he's thinking about it. Oh, oh, there you go. Yep, oh. perfect. Good job. Good, good boy. job. Good job. Yeah, he can't be moving around like that. No. And when he does and you make him do it, that's perfect. The less movement he does, the the uh, less pressure he gets. So that's really, really good, just what you're doing right there. Good job. Yeah, he's looking back at me like, what, what now? What are we yep. doing? Yep. He, think, he thinks he needs to be the one that makes decisions, and he is wrong. Forward. Good boy. Good. Ha. Uh, ha. Uh. Good. Ha. Uh, ha. Uh. Ha. Uh. Good boy. That felt good. G. Good. G. Good. G. Good boy. G. Good. G. Good boy. G. Good boy. G. G. Good boy. Oh. 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 Yeah, turning back to the to the left. Make him make see how uh, he's kind of start he's start patterning around to kind of turn. Yeah. There you go. Make uh, him turn around. Good job. Good whoa. job. Good job. Good job. Good boy. Excellent job. Good boy. Excellent. So the first time you see him start to do that little that move off, just correct him so that we don't we don't let him uh, think that he can yeah do a little bit. It's okay. I can get away with this. Okay. It's a, it's about stopping and, and standing. So that's a really good thing to work on. It's subtle. It doesn't look like much until it starts to really get where he's halfway facing you, but mm -hmm. we can't let it start. So that's a really good job. Oh. Really thing to work on. Same thing. Oh. There. there you go. He's making a decision. Oh. He and look how hard it is oh, for him to have to boy. move around. There you go. That's better. I would even it's the be hardest thing in the world to just stand still. It is. What I would do now is even be more Nazi like. He's turned about uh, he's about a foot and a half to the left where uh, his hind end is, where he should be a little bit more to the right. Because that was exactly, see, you can see the footprints in the mud there where he started. Yeah. So make sure he stands at right in the exact same spot he was because he's still able to look at you a little bit more, a little bit more vision out of that eye if you oh. see it from his perspective. There you go. 
There you go. That's better. You just and and it doesn't matter now. You're correcting him, so that's perfect. Oh. Oh. Very good. Yeah, he's still wanting to make more decisions. So pulling back around. And that's a pain with that oh. uh, line there because you're not directly affecting their face without coming up over their hind end. Yeah. And it's, oh it's tough to do. There we go. Good. Good job. Nice relaxed Better. leg. He's chewing. Good. Very Thank good. You. Little lessons learned. Little lessons yeah. going into the noggin box. Oh, I can't move. I just got to stand here. <laughs> Which is like, he's so lazy. Like, I know he doesn't want to run around. He just wants to be a little snotty teenager and just, oh, I'm going to do what I want. I'm just going to dance around in place here. Right. Can't stop me. No. Okay. Let's try. We're going to try walking up to the gate and stopping in front of it. There you go. Forward. That could have been bad. G. G. Good boy. So he's throwing that head around a little bit, and that's probably out of frustration because I don't see you really being overly uh, harsh on his mouth. I think you're you're light handed. Uh, he's just he's just upset that he doesn't get to do what he wants to do. Huh? Yeah, he's just being a little brat. Huh? Yep. Good boy. Whoa. Good boy. Forward. Good boy. Whoa. Good boy. Oh, yeah, he is all about going in there. <laughs> oh. Huh. Just can't contain my excitement. I got to wiggle around. Oh. A little, a little rear transition. jump. Yep. He's oh, yeah. on me. Yep. Oh. If he goes in there and tries to grab a bite to eat, don't allow that to oh. happen. Oh. Good. Very good. And this is, oh. this is a test for him because he's like, hey, I get to go do something, and I want to do it now. Oh. Pop him on the butt. Make him go forward. There you go. Oh. Oh my! Oh, you total temper tantrum! Oh my goodness! Ah, uh, uh, good boy! Oh, what was me, Yagi? Ah, uh, ah! Uh, good boy! Good. good. He wanted to go G, and you're making him ha. That's awesome. Ah, uh, good boy. Yeah, typically they want to do something that they want to do. I make them do exactly the opposite because it's all yeah. about control. You want to go forward? We can just stand here. Oh. Good boy. Very good. Good. Very good. Yeah, and I'm all about if he wants to back up a little bit and take some pressure off the harness. That's good. There's not a problem with that. And in fact, is when I'm on their back, I want them, when I say stop, I want them to at least shift their weight back a little bit. Mm -hmm. It makes it, you know, that's, that's what creates that really good crisp stop. Yeah, relax, relieve that pressure, and then they're yep. willing to stop. Yes. And then, you know, of course, in harness, and then he can only back so far up, but he's not at least sitting there with pressure on the, on the harness. Right. Okay, let's try it again. Forward. Good boy. G. 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 Good boy. Forward. Ha. 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 Good boy. There you ha. Go. Good. Good boy. Forward. Forward. Good boy. Just wanting ha. to be difficult. G. Good boy, huh? Good boy. Whoa. Good. Good boy. 
Much better. Good boy. Much better. And this is this is this is seems like it's maybe taunting them. You know that okay, we're going to come up to here, and now we're going to stop, and then we're going to move mm -hmm. away from it like you did last time. It's like good as long as he behaves. Then you might go forward. He throws a fit. Okay, you take that away oh. and you go work some more. Oh, exactly. Like I know he's you know rearing to go in there, but I'm not going to give in to what he wants. That's exactly uh, right. Yep. So if he's going to stand there and be calm, then we can go in. If he's going to throw a fit, then we go away from it. Yep. Oh. Oh, good boy. <laughs> you can just see the little world get smaller and smaller. I know. It's just frustrating. Like, what? Are you kidding me? G. G. Good boy. Very good. Good boy. There's no breakfast in there for you. G. Good boy. G. Good. G. G. Good. Ha. Uh. Ha. Uh. Good. G. You're like, fine, now I won't go near it. Forward. Good boy. G. He is, he is so willful. Ah. Oh. Good boy. Very good. Very good. Should we try going in? I, yeah, I would think oh. so. He's wanted to turn oh. away, so now's the time to take him in. There you go. Good boy. Very good. Good boy. Forward. G. We're going in there. Yeah. Forward. <laughs> like, what? Now you just want to cross the mud. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just gravel. There we go. Whoa. Yeah, so he might get a little chargy. Good. So oh yeah, N nothing to eat here. Nope. Good boy. Whoa. Ah. Uh. Oh. Oh. Deep. Good boy. Whoa. 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 Good boy. Good boy. Better. Good. Good, Good boy. Whoa. Uh -uh. Whoa. Whoa. Good. Good correction. You're doing everything right. You're not me you're not even moving. Nope. And he's all uh -huh. and that's perfect. It's good. Oh. Ha. Ha. Good boy. Ha. Good boy. Oh. Oh. Temper tantrum. Oh, yeah. Ah. Quit. Oh. Good boy. Good boy. Oh. Good boy. We can go in there when you earn it. Forward. Good boy. Oh. Oh. Good boy. Oh. Good Very boy. Good. Very good. Now you're controlling him well. That's good. Very good. What a little brat. Good boy. Do you want to take him through that gate again and just make a circle if you can and bring him right back in without stopping? Yeah. 
see if that'll work. See, you know, get a little bit oh, of, uh, you're going to get control. You're going to get, you know, uh, several good lessons there huh? and trying to keep him from being chargy. Oh, huh? he, he is just mad. Huh? Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, what was you? <laughs> oh, man. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Huh? Huh? Whoa! Whoa! I right, snapped yeah, the ring want, off. He wants to quit. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he's taking you, taking you back, so you'll unsaddle him. So this is really good. Take him right back out that gate and make him go into the grass. Oh, yeah! I broke off one of his rings, so we'll have to oh. try it. Oh, I see that. Yep, that's yeah. all right. Yeah, you'll, you'll be right. I still attached on the pack board. Oh. Yeah, you're you're gonna be totally fine. Oh. Just oh. just be mindful that it can get under his foot. Yeah. So I'd give him a good G when he gets up in the air. If he does that, pull hard on that on that face. Get him to come over. That's uncalled okay. for. Make him there. You go and now drive him forward. Oh, Pop him on the butt. Oh, he's, he's, he's being kind of. A little pat, not even so much passive aggressive. He's being a little assertive here, so this is where you be assertive back with yeah. and a little bit more increase yeah. in the severity. And you can give them a little bit of oh, uh, they can mess around, screw around a little bit, and be a puss head. But um, oh, as long as they're corrected, they're corrected. But oh yeah, he's just being a jerk. Oh. 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 Good boy. Are you done? <laughs> Forward. Ha. Ha. Good job. Good ha. job. Good boy. Forward. Good. 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 I think you can feel, I can see the way you're, the way you are, um, carrying yourself and controlling him. You are, um, you're feeling what he needs to have happen. I, I can see that you're like not hesitating, uh. which is the right thing. There you go. Oh, he's going to be just a little jerk and good. He flipped himself over. So what? Good boy. There you go. Oh, look at that. Oh. All, all of this throwing a fit and all this energy, and it's not getting me anywhere. Nope. Very good. Oh, my. Yeah, oh, you're in love. you the same thing. Your confidence, your confidence in what you're doing is showing, Ashley. It's very, very good. Thank you. I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm not scared of what he's doing. It's just throwing no. a little temper tantrum. <laughs> Right, and 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 uh, it isn't like you don't know what you don't what you're not or what you're supposed to do because you're doing it. Yeah. So very good. Forward. Well, I'm glad we did this today. Yep. No, this is good. Uh, one thing you do when what you should do, and and because uh, I can't really see it, I just want to remind you that. If you're going to turn him to the uh, uh, on a ha, make sure that G line is completely slack. Okay. And and the same as the opposite, so that you're not you're not oh, uh, giving him conflicting or... information. Oh. Oh. There you go. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Whoa. I'm going to get his little lead rope. It fell down on this other side. Mm. Yeah, this, as long as this is a good opportunity to uh, pet him, reinforce in him that standing here nice and calm is a good thing. Yeah, good boy. You're doing a good job. Just being a little brat. Let's get this guy out of the way.
you don't need to be doing all that extra stuff. Oh, yeah. Drop your head. Good job. There we go. That's Good better. job. There you go. There you go. Know, it's a tough life being a little Augie. <laughs> Forward. Good boy. G. G. Good. G. Good boy. Very Forward. Good. Very good. Good oh, boy. Look at all of that. And now we are going to go out here anyway. And nice and controlled. So far, so good. Good, good, good. G. Very good. Good boy. Quit. Very, good very boy. good. Forward. Good corrections. He's looking to just pay it his own uh, homage to grass eating, and you're not mm -hmm. allowing him to do it. You're catching it before he ever gets his face right down to it, which is fantastic. Oh. Good boy. Good boy. Can you can you immediately go back out and take a, a, oh. a bigger circle this time? Yeah. Do exactly Forward. the same thing. Just make your circle a little bigger. Good boy. Oh yeah, he gets close to he he, ah. he sees that that gate to him is five o'clock. It's time yeah. to quit. Good boy. There G. you go. G. I don't want to go through those barrels. G. I don't want to go through the barrels. Good boy. Huh. Good boy. Good. Huh. Yeah. And getting him away from where he wants to go and right directly to work is exactly the right thing. Good job. Yeah. He's a little hard to control there because he's he's he'll go left or right. He doesn't he doesn't care as long as he can go and do what he wants. It's a good day. There we go. Not bad. Bad. As soon as you turn back to that gate, he's going to probably just line right out and be a good boy. Forward. You jinxed it, Brandon. I did. Why would you say such a thing? It's all me. D. D. Good boy. There Good go. boy. Now turn him right back around. G. Good boy. There we go. Because now we got a new five o'clock gate. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Let's see if we can get around this willow. Good boy. Very good, Ashley. He's he's more he's controlled, and it's these little tiny fights like that that you've got to he, win, and you got to win quickly uh, that, that makes him line out a little better. And he's yeah. one of these guys that he's been so spoiled that he's like, eh, I'll just keep at it. I got nothing but time. Right. Like, guess what, buddy? I'm on horse time today. That's right. <laughs> I have noticed that telling them that does make a difference if I am training or working with a horse and they're just being stubborn. I'm like, I got all the time in the world. I'm on horse time today. I don't have to you be know, anywhere. You know, that's a and really good like, thing. Oh. To, yeah. And it's a good thing to bring up because I think they sense the... If, if you're on a time crunch and you got, okay, mm -hmm. I've only got an hour to work this horse... They can sense that that bit of anxiousness of or urgency. anxiety that I've got to get this done. If there is no anxiety like that, they're like, oh, okay, here we are. It's just yeah. another day of whatever for as long as it takes. They really right? do sense that. See, it's like that joke in college that printers smell fear. They yeah, know when you need right. a printer assignment at the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> I've got I I've got that gene that's got a, a uh, every every printer or hey. copier in the world has that uh, tension sensor because when I get close to them, they just break down. Just freeze up. Yep. Is All he right. getting a little? Was that him getting a little vocal? Yeah. Yeah, he's he's hey. getting upset. He doesn't get to do what he wants, and now he's going to talk out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Mom's yelling Good. from across the street. Chinook's yelling from his stall. Oh, Nerdy's yeah. contributing. G, good boy. G, good boy. G, good. good. 
He's more solid in, in his movement. He's less pushy, less chargy. Yeah, even for just a turn of his head when he responds to G, I'm just praising him. Like, yes, yep. that's the direction I want you to go. That's right. <laughs> okay. It's those small, small, subtle corrections and phrases that, that make all the difference. Okay. Good boy. There we go. Very good. I think we're just about out of time. Yeah. <laughs> and I think th yeah, things are going really well. I don't think there's any reason to push it. I mean, we could, and then, but we got to make sure we've got the time. If he starts acting up a lot more, then we got to correct that. And then yeah, I'd rather it. call it right here. We're good. <laughs> yeah, no, I think so. I think you, you, you're, we are doing it really well. He's getting a little bit chargy going back. It looks yeah. like. Oh, we're going to walk home. Good yep, I'd, make him, I'd make him stop also. There, oh. a good job. You already did it. I couldn't see it yeah. with a camera angle. Oh. Excellent. Excellent job. We got people showing up and dogs and lots of distractions about to get here. That's all right. Good boy, Augie. And, and those are those again. Those are training opportunities. So, yeah, not a problem. I, I, I mean, and we know he's going to probably act up, but we know why, so we can we can still adjust to that and correct it and make him uh, work quietly oh. in spite of it. Very good. Very good. Very good. Good boy. All right. Well, thank you for your time today, Brandon. You're welcome. Uh, good job, and uh, we'll just keep uh, working on this new plan. And mm -hmm. see how it goes, and I think that uh, we're going to have some success here. We'll just keep, I think so. and keep doing our thing. I think and, we're going to keep and, some uh, horses over here this week, and we'll keep him here with them, so I can work with him every day. Oh, there you go. That'll that'll be really good. So I think yeah. we're we're uh, still on schedule for next Monday, then. Yes. Yeah, and we'll get a new plan figured out, and we'll keep you in the loop with it. Awesome. We will see you then. Good job. Great. Thanks. Have a great day. You too. Bye bye. Bye.